Welcome back to the Coyote Car Channel. In today's episode, I'm going to show you how to install freeze plugs into pretty much any engine block out there, but specifically we're working on a Chevy 305. So I'll show you how to remove these and the hidden places where they are, as well as how to install them and get them in properly. And you don't need any real fancy tools, you just need a set of sockets a hammer, an extension, and a bit of gasket maker to complete this job and it's really easy so let's get to it. So the first thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over the engine and show you where all the freeze plugs and plugs are that you need to remove before you clean the block or take it to a shop to have it cleaned. So under here this is an oil pressure sensor right here, mechanical and there's going to be a cap on there. You're going to unscrew that and you're going to take a rod. I used an old uh, antenna that I don't use and you're going to slide that in there until it bottoms out and I've already knocked mine out but you're going to take a hammer and tap that down into there and that will knock out your hidden freeze plug. And that's after you remove all the main caps. The next set that you're going to come across of plugs are these two here and these two here I will show you how to remove now. So now I'm not going to lie to you, these things can kind of put up a fight so you're going to want a set of vice grips, a flathead screwdriver, and a hammer. And what I tend to do is I'll start at the bottom and I take my hammer and I'll tap and kind of lean down with it while it's going. And if that doesn't work, then you'll know that you're hitting the cylinder. So you want to come over to this side over here. And you want it to do it just like that. So it's kind of flipping up on this edge here. And you want to get it like that. And once you've got it to that point there, then what you can do is you can take your, your vice grips. And this makes it a lot easier than having to fish it out. Let me reposition here and get the pen. Okay. So then what you can do is you can take your hammer at this point and you can tap, not bang the hell out of it, but just tap right here on the vice grip. And that'll pull it right out like that. And that's how you get the side and the two front. So as you go around the block, you're going to start to notice different bolts and stuff like that. They're just kind of sitting along. So you've got one here, one here, and you're just going to want to take these out. And they're just basic Allen key bolts. Um, one of them I had to take a 3 8 inch drive and I had to kind of file it down to get it a little flatter to fit inside that square hole. Um, these are just little um, quarter inch bolts. There's one right here. Um, if you have, It's probably a good idea to take the motor mounts off. You're going to have it tanked. You don't really want to tank your motor mounts. Um, and then this is just a, another water plug here. Um, so that will either be a water plug sensor or something of that nature. So going back to that hidden one that I was telling you about, um, let me see if I can get, yeah, right there. So the one that you can see the light through right here is where that hidden one will pop out. And you're just going to, when you install that one, I'll show you how to do that right now. So you can use a 3 8 extension to do this, but I found that a 9 16 um, bolt that's longer um, actually fits into the concave very well on this. And um, you don't actually want to use any kind of lubricant. Um, you just want to slide it in there until it kind of bottoms out like that. And then take your hammer, line up your punch or bolt or whatever you're using. And hit it until it lightly bottoms out. Like that. And then it's installed in there. I'll give you a close up with the flashlight of that so you can see what that looks like in there. And there you go. Now you can see that it is 
installed in there. So that will be the only one as far as the freeze plugs go that you will not have to use any gasket maker or anything like that. And just take your time with it, don't rush, and everything will be fine. You will feel it bottom out, and you saw I was not tapping very hard, so just be really careful with it. So let's move on. So um, I stand corrected. Actually, I don't use gasket maker on these three freeze plugs either. Um, they're actually called oil galley plugs, and they keep the oil in there to build pressure. The way that you uh, remove these is obviously they're caps like this, and they go in there. But to remove them, what you do is you have to remove three uh, threaded bolts on the other side, and I'll show you how to get at those. And then you'll shove a rod through in each of these little lines that run through to pop these three out. And you want to remove these if you're going to have your engine tanked, otherwise there's no point. It won't clean everything out, so uh, that's just a really crucial part of doing this. So I will show you how to get those three on the back side off and show you where to run the rod through. So these are the stock ones that come on the block when it was made by the manufacturer and um, I guess they, they might remake these, but um, anyways, if you're trying to get these ones off, these three specifically that I'm talking about off the back of the engine, um, a quarter inch drive um, fits just great in there. It might be helpful if you have an impact to just kind of break that, that, that bond between the rust. So, um, but the new ones, they actually come with a quarter inch Allen head and so you know those are pretty easy to get on and off of there as opposed to using this quarter inch maybe hole. So another thing if you are having a hard time finding these um, you can go down to your local um, plumbing supply store and they should have them. Now what I'm actually going to have to do is I can start these and I've got a little bit of Teflon tape on them just to kind of seal it um, a little bit more. But I'm going to start all these and then I'm going to um, hook it up to my crane and lift it up so I can actually install the rest of these and I'll show you guys how to start doing the freeze plugs as well. So let's get into that. But before I forget to tell you, yes, this is where these uh, your rod can go in and slide all the way back to the back and knock out those three plugs there. So obviously um, we'll have to lift up the engine and I'll show you how it just goes straight through to the other side like that. And go ahead and put some tension on the engine. Like that. And then you're going to loosen all four bolts on the back side here. And I'm doing this So once you have the uh, cap off here, then like I said, you can slide this and it'll go all the way through and out to the other end. And then it'll stop like right about here. And you'll want to just tap it with a hammer and you'll hear it pop out of the other side. So the next thing I'm going to show you is how to install this freeze plug here and this freeze plug here. Obviously you want to tighten these down pretty far, but you don't want to break them off or break your tool off inside of there. So I'm just going to slide the tool in there and just start tightening it down and turn the tool over the amount of torque on it like that and that will be good. It doesn't have to be completely flush. And we'll do the third one. So there's just a few things that you're going to need to do this job. Um, the first thing you're going to need is a paper towel to wipe your fingers off. The uh, freeze plug that you're going to install. A 
hammer. And I found it really useful to just get a socket that will actually slip into like that of the freeze plug. And the final thing you're going to need is some uh, RTV. And so basically what you're going to do is throw your paper towel over your lap and start throwing a little bead of silicone about halfway around. And then what you're going to do is just kind of work that around and sort of evenly distribute the silicone all the way around. You want a nice little even layer so that way it will go on correctly. Wipe the excess off on your paper towel and I like to line the numbers up up and down so I'll just go ahead and set that in there so that's proper. Take my socket, easily put that in there and start whacking away until it's just below flush. And there you go. So at that point then you can uh, take the clean part of your paper towel and kind of wipe off any extra gasket material. This part of the engine is never really going to be seen so it doesn't really matter. But just for demonstration purposes I'm going to clean it up. So then uh, you're going to do the same thing. So this is going to be on a Chevy 305 or a Chevy 350. There's only going to be one of these O-rings that is this thin and this wide. As you can see compared to this one it's almost double the size. So anyway you're going to do this one the same way and this goes on the back. So you're going to do the exact same thing. I throw a little bead of the RTV on the back like that. And just like on the other ones you do the exact same thing and just kind of as best you can evenly distribute. I like to line up my numbers and once you do that go ahead and wipe your fingers off. Now I don't have a socket that's actually this big so there's a couple of things you could do. You could take a piece of metal stock to lay over this but I'm actually just gonna I'm just gonna slowly tap it and just see how it goes. Okay, and that worked just fine, so go ahead and clean it up a little bit. Check your depth if it needs to go down a little deeper. Well then, take it down a little bit further, but that looks uh, just fine and dandy to me. So I'm going to get it back up on the engine stand and we'll throw the rest of them in. Also, if you guys don't know how to use an engine stand or a hoist, uh, I will link in the description below on how to do that. Also, if you haven't already, um, if you could subscribe and hit the bell icon, I'd really appreciate it. It's what helps keep this channel alive. Uh, so the next thing um, that we're gonna go ahead and do is we are going to install the front oil galley bolts. And we're gonna do it the same way as uh, we did the hidden oil bolt, and that's by using a 3 8 uh, sorry, a 9 16 bolt and um, we're just gonna basically line that up in there like that. Let me get you zoomed in so you can see. So I've just taken the cap like that, put it on there and lined it up. You wanna get it kinda flush all the way around and then just go ahead and hit it a couple of times. And then if it doesn't, if it starts to kinda go in there cockeyed, like that one did there, then you can take the back of the bolt and just kind of level it in. And there you go. And there it is. And so 
so now that those are done, I'm going to, now we can work on this one and this one here. And you already know how to did those because those were done on the other ones. So let's move on. And so like I said, you want to knock these down to uh, just below flush. So take them to flush and give them two or three more wax and that should put it down to the proper depth for you. So the next one that you want to do is you actually want to plug up um, this one here that has to do with your oil filtration system. Um, this actually goes inside and into the oil filter. This one right here just goes back to where the flywheel is as well as this one here. So you don't have to worry about these two. Um, but this one right here you really want to plug up. Otherwise, when you start up your engine for the first time, you are going to have oil shooting out everywhere. So, um, I mean, you can use Teflon on this one. Um, I really don't like to, but um, you can just to get a better seal. But I don't recommend doing any RTV. You don't want any of that stuff getting into your oil. So just crank that down and there you go. Then you can move on to this one and the one right next to it and the two on the other side. And yeah, so pretty much if it has oil, uh, I don't recommend using RTV. But, yep, and then um, these holes down here at the bottom, this is um, connected to your water jacket. So like I said, this is a temperature, so you can plug this up if you want. Um, if you're not going to have a sensor in there, you're going to want to. Um, also, these are connected to water jackets sometimes, so you're going to want to throw a bolt in there or something like that. So, other than that, that's pretty much it. <laughs> So if you like what you saw here today and you want to see some more about engine building or anything like that, if you have any requests, go ahead and put those in the comments. Make sure you subscribe and if you hit that bell icon, it will keep you up to date on my latest content whenever I upload it or anything like that. I'm going to be doing a lot of stuff with the dart this spring and I'm going to be doing a lot of engine building over the winter. So tune in next week and I will have something else to teach you guys. Thanks for watching.